Minecraft 1.14, I am still in love, but I do have a few tips and tricks that I can throw your way so that you can get the most out of your 1.14 game. So here we are inside of Minecraft, and this is a list of tips and tricks, but really I'm kind of going to go through like my favorite tips and tricks, things that I use all the time when playing in Minecraft 1.14 that if you haven't heard of, I'd be very, very sad. And so you should, you know, use everything that I'm saying because it's super duper awesome. We're going to start off this list with crawling. Crawling is like seriously amazing that now your player isn't always just locked to that too tall block Ness, he can also crawl onto the ground. It looks an awful lot like swimming. And it's, it is it is actually the, the swim. You can see the fact that, like, how would you crawl with your hands that go, like, through the floor? Like, you don't, you wouldn't crawl. You would swing, swim that way, but that's about it. In order to pull this off, you just saw me do it. Uh, you just need any type of trap door, and uh, it will push you down to start crawling. And this can really be any block that basically pushes your player into a situation where you only have one block to move. So you could do this with pistons. Uh, you could, uh, that's, that's really it. Pistons, uh, trapdoors. Uh, I, th I think I think that's that's just about, maybe you're Elytra. If you're Elytra and you were flying and you were able to fit through a one, uh, a one block area, then you would stay crawling that is also true. Sort of in the same vein is as crawling is actually crouching. And I've mentioned this so many times, but I love the fact that you can now go into, we have the whole range. We got two blocks high. That's what you normally are. You got one block high when you're crawling. Now we have one and a half blocks high when you are crouching. Now, I mentioned this a whole bunch of times, but what I really want to say for a tip or a trick is that if you need to get away from any type of hostile mob, or let's say you have a pin of villagers, let's say you're in a safe location, everything's lit up, you have plenty of walls, and these villagers are not going to be killed, but you have them in a pin, well, you can easily create this situation where you only have a one and a half block gap to scoot in between your villagers cannot crouch like you can neither can hostile mobs so being this is basically a doorway that only the player and one high like little baby zombies they could get through here so you, you do have to make sure it's safe but really the only the player is going to enter or exit from this area and i really like this as a secure doorway to use in your worlds. Next, there are so many tips and tricks when it comes to the fireplace. First is that you can make all of your food turn into cooked food just by placing it around the edge of the fireplace. And this uses zero fuel. So if you're really, really early on in the game and you don't have a lot of coal to spend on always smelting up your food, you can use this to your advantage. In fact, I did that when I started my single player or multiplayer when I really didn't have many resources. This is the recipe, only one piece of coal, like I was saying, to make a campfire. So with that one piece, you can make a lot of food. If you're patient, you do have to kind of mind it a little bit more than you would just a furnace because as these pork chops or whatever type of food you're trying to cook, cook up, they pop off the campfire and then of course you only have five minutes until they despawn. So you do need to mind it a little bit more, but making uh, making your food without any fuel cost is a really, really, really nice thing in the beginning. And then the other tip and trick is that it has this awesome bit of smoke, and this is just an amazing detail whenever you are trying to build. And obviously, if you didn't know, uh, I'd be very sad, so I'm going to tell you right now that if you put hay underneath your fire, it makes the smoke trail, see how it kind of ends right there? Now that we've added the hay, it will continue on much, much further. So if you're trying to make a beacon for your house without actually going through and killing a wither and all that stuff, 
a smoke trail is a great way to find where you are in a world. So use hay underneath your fire to make the smoke longer. My next tip and trick is to never forget about the grindstone. The grindstone is used to disenchant items. So if you happen to have a grinder or even just a whole bunch of equipment that you have lying around, maybe you killed a whole bunch of skeletons and you got some loot that has a few enchantments on it, well, right here, I am at zero levels at the bottom. You can see right above my hop bar there. But the moment that I put something in and pull it out, you can see that it comes out without any enchantments. You get those levels back. And so if you do this a lot, this is a great way to gain levels. So don't ever forget to disenchant the items that you receive. I'm already up to level six. Early on in a Minecraft world, by the way, these have Feather Falling 4 and Blast Protection, and the more levels, the more, uh, the, are, I mean, the more of an enchantment, the more levels you get. So this Looting 3 Sword, if I disenchant that, um, I could possibly get more than all of the others. So just with that inventory of stuff, I have 13 levels. If you have an automatic fish farm, this is this is like a must have. You can disenchant all the extra bows, all the extra fishing rods, and get levels early in the game before you have maybe another type of level grinder. Like maybe you haven't set up any type of mob farm at all. This is a great way to have levels stored away for when you want to enchant. My next tip and trick, this one's kind of uh, basic, uh, is that the lantern looks really, really good. It's, it's kind of, that's kind of, the 1.14 lantern may be one of my favorite blocks. I love how it has a little animation. I love how it looks. I wish that it could fit onto the, like the side of blocks. You can't attach this to the side of things. It has to be either hanging or on the ground. That's kind of a bummer. But other than that, just that my tip and trick is just like use a lantern more often. It's pretty cheap, although it does take a basically an, an ingot, an iron ingot and a uh, a torch. If you are unfamiliar with the recipe, it is the torch in the center followed by iron nuggets all the way around the torch. And that will give you a lantern. And I somehow missed the lantern in all of my pages of stuff. My final tip and trick is do not forget that signs can have color. So this is a dark oak sign and the black text on the front of it makes it really, really, really hard to read unless you're up close. So you can re-dye this sign. White is one of my favorite for the dark oak sign. And then if you also have another sign, so let's just say uh, sub to OMG craft. There we go, I'm glad that all fit on that sign. If you want that to just look a little bit different, you could dye it brown or maybe dye it yellow or dye it red for, you know, reasons. But I really love the fact that you can now dye signs and it really makes things pop and lots of people forget about it and I just absolutely love it. There you have it, my list of my favorite 1.14 tips and tricks for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Is there anything that I forgot? Make sure you let me know in the comments down below. Also, make sure that you like this video if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to subscribe for future videos, tips, tricks, tutorials, and spotlights here on OMG Craft. See you next time. Bye.